Welcome back CIS 1400 and welcome again to module 8. Uh, this is part 2 of our object oriented programming series. In part 1 we talked about uh, how to write a class, a class being a, a container and encapsulation for attributes and methods that pertain to a given object. We related it back to those parallel arrays and how each the index value all kind of related information back to a given thing and how this could be a better op option for us. So we started making this person object and that person has a name, address, and phone number. Those would be three different things that are all separated into different parallel arrays. Maybe you've got a name array, an address array, and a phone number array. But here, instead of that, now I can start actually just making it all into one particular object. And we talked about over here how we can instantiate said object in some sort of a client file or test file. The person um, class name is used like a function, and what we would do is then pass it the arguments necessary that the constructor asks for to make sure that we're setting up that information. Now the one thing that we ran into in the last example was that we were able to modify information. So we ended up changing um, the information from a public attribute, say self.address, to a private attribute to self.underscore underscore name. Anytime we use those two underscores in front of a variable name, an attribute, or a method name, what it does is it makes it private so that we can still use it, but we have to use it from within the context of the class itself. So now I can't come over here and actually modify the person's name. So what we're going to want to do is make sure that we make basically all of our attributes private for the most part. That's usually good programming practice. Okay. So now instead of this being a public attribute, this is now a private attribute. And so was this one. All right. And we'd like to be able to access these things over here. It would make sense that we're able to print out the name or the address or the phone number anytime we really need to. Um, but we'd have to do that using other features. So what we call those are accessor and mutator methods. So what we'll end up doing in the, in the class itself is now writing functions that will allow us to gain access to those that are public in nature, but they'll never allow us to change or modify the information if we want, unless we absolutely need to or want to. <clears throat> so here's the idea. Maybe we come up with a couple methods. We call these get methods. So we'll call it and start it with the word def, and we'll say get name. Okay. Usually you'll have your accessor methods, um, always start with the word git and then follow it up with the attribute name uh, starting with a capital letter. And again, when I start with typing the parentheses here, it's going to throw in the keyword self for me. And that makes sense because I'm talking about a method that's meant to access information about a specific instance. So I need that keyword self there. And this method is actually really easy. It's just simply going to return, it's a return method, the name attribute dot underscore underscore name. Okay. And let's write the other ones. Def get address. And again, keyword self. And we're going to return uh, self dot address. Oops. All right. And last one, we'll do def get uh, phone number. Or just phone. And we'll return self dot phone. All right. So now over here, if you recall, I had no way of actually accessing the name attribute doing something like this. So print uh, person one dot underscore underscore name. Like that just didn't exist. And you can already tell that it's not going to work. And if I run it, it's just going to give me that error message that I had before saying that the name has no attribute name, where it clearly does, but it just can't see it over here. So instead of me being able to print it through that, what I can do is now access it via the method itself. So I can do dot get name, and what that will do for me is actually return it. Notice how it has the self keyword here, but I'm not going to provide it with any argument over here. We'll never, ever, ever pass an argument to the keyword self. And so now I can run person test, and you're going to see that it runs out Zach. I'm going to get rid of this print statement here. We don't need to see that anymore. 
and I can also do print person2 dot get name. Okay, and now I can see the name of person2 very easily. And it should print both names, Zach and Sam. And I can do that with both the address and the phone number very easily. Okay, So those are what we call our accessor methods or our git methods. Every private attribute in the class, or in the constructor I should say, should have an accessor method so that we can gain access to the information the way that we want. Okay, uh, The other methods we're going to want to be able to do is have a mutator method, so some way of actually changing the data within. Okay, so since I can't access it and change it directly from here, like there is absolutely no way for me to do something like person one dot get name is equal to Ted. Like it just doesn't make any sense because get name is a function. It doesn't actually change or have access to the information directly at all, and it simply just returns a value. So this complete statement doesn't um, have any kind of logical representation whatsoever. So what I'd like to do is come up with some sort of method that will allow me to change it if I so wish. And these would be what we call our mutator methods. So let me write a quick comment up here for our accessor methods. And then we'll write our mutator methods. Okay. So these are basically going to set up the same way, def, and we'll say set name. And it's going to have the keyword self in there. And what I'm going to want to do with every set method is also pass in an attribute, um, maybe something like new name. Okay? That way I can come into the client, pass that new name in, and what it will do is come through and go self.name equals new name. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why the heck would I make a method here to set the name of an attribute? Um, when I could just make it public and be able to manipulate it any way I want. Well, sometimes there'll be some checks and balances in here that says, hey, we can only allow it to set it up if it's correctly done. So for instance, I may only do it, say, if new name, or something like this, len of new name is, say, greater than zero. Okay? So, oops, we don't need that, we need a colon. And then it will actually do it for me. Okay. Else print invalid name. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say that this is the opportunity for you to validate input yet. Um, I would probably still do the validation piece over here in the client to make sure that it's appropriate, um, whatever that may be. Um, but we could do some checks and balances here to make sure that we have some things typed in appropriately. Um, maybe my set name, if it was a bank account uh, problem, might also have me pass in like a person's PIN number, something that they entered earlier at the ATM that the client is still holding on to, to make sure that it's the valid PIN number for the person or maybe anything like that. So what I could do here is obviously I can print their names. And now that I've got this mutator method, I could do something like person1 dot set name, and I could type in a name like um, Tim. Okay. And I could easily then print person1 dot get name. So you'll see that it prints person1's name, person's two name, and then we'll do a couple of blank print statements just to make sure, or a blank print statement just to make sure we've got some things going through there. Okay, let's run this program one time. And it's going to print Zach and Sam, which is exactly what they were to begin with. So get name on person one produces Zach, get name on person two produces Sam. I print a blank line and then I set person's one name to Tim and I say person one dot get name. Same line of code that I had up here, but now it's going to print Tim because person's one's name actually changed to Tim. So that attribute is holding it a little bit differently. So I could finish this out and actually write up the other mutator method, something like def set uh, address. do something like new address, type it, All right. and I'll go self.address, equals new address, and then I might do something like def 
set phone. Oops, not self. Uh, new phone. Um, and again, here I might make sure that it's of type integer or something of that nature and make sure that it's the right length. Uh, but there's all sorts of different checks that I can do here. But either way, we're going to say um, self.phone equals new phone. Okay. So now I can play with this. And I'm just going to get rid of person2 to begin with here. We don't need that print statement anymore. But I can set person1's name to Tim and person1 dot set uh, phone to a new phone number which is like um, instead of uh, five 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 two three four one I can do seven four three five six five seven three right and I can easily print that out as well jeez get phone And now you'll see that the phone number changed from 555-2341 to now what it is, 743-6573. So it's just a nice way to be able to access and change the information from within. Okay. Um, so obviously a nice addition to our class and what it can do. Um, but those are what we call our accessor and mutator methods. So our goal here is to always make our information private as best as we can. Um, the attributes of the object private. And then we'll go through and anytime we need that information, run it through the get methods and set methods. Now you'll notice because they're private, I can still access them from within the class. I, there's no reason I can't do self dot underscore underscore address or self dot underscore underscore name or phone. Um, I'm able to do that without any issue. What these do is just simply give me the ability to work with them over here, per se. Okay? So that kind of wraps it up for just your accessor and mutator methods, the get and set methods of any problem. Realistically, for every attribute you have, they should be declared as private or uh, made as private. And then they should also have some sort of accessor and mutator method associated with them. I don't care what the attribute is. It's just always a good idea to kind of have that. There may be other methods in there that will access that data and print it out in other ways, like what we'll investigate in the next video. And there might be other methods that you all write that will um, change the data in some way, shape, or form, which, again, we'll investigate in the next video. But it's always a good idea to have the ability to just change them at their source and access them at their source in some way, shape, or form. So have those accessor and get mutator methods in there. It's always a good idea to have that. Um, and we'll catch you in the next video when we start actually talking about object methods and making this uh, person actually do specific things for a person. Okay, So be on the lookout for that video in part three.